Hey everybody, welcome back. This week we're going to get some seats mounted and we've got some tires and wheels to look at and I think we can get them mounted and it'll be all ready to drive at that point. So let's see how far we get. Alright, so we're starting to look at putting in the seat and as with a lot of the car, there are no instructions, no hardware, no mounting points, so we'll just do what we always do, uh, kind of figure it out on the fly. So there are metal plates uh, in the bottom of these seats. Um, again, uh, no documentation says that, but a little magnet here on the end of this and definitely uh, there's metal there. So, and up here as well. So I'm gonna screw two holes in here uh, for fastening points and we've got some square stock. We'll start building a frame for these seats uh, that can mount to the car. All right, so my thought is there's the uh, fiberglass, but there's no real mounting points. Um, they've got one bar here and then one way back here. And if I want this adjustable, I've got, I ordered some uh, adjustable rails, but I want those mounted to steel. So I think what I'll do is I'll um, weld a piece from here to here, and then I can just bolt on the adjustable frame rail. And I'll do that in both spots. Um, but again, I don't know exactly how to line this up because it's quite tight. Um, I'll call it somewhat like F1 style where it's, it's pretty difficult to get in. You almost have to kind of slide your feet under. All right, I'm starting to look at seats and positions and things. Um, I guess in normal cars, I tend to lean my seat back just a little bit. Um, I think... Anyway, I think part of what it is is just the way my body's shaped or whatever. Um, I, I want to press the legs but have my body back enough that I've got my arms kind of extended. And so I would like to have it back just a little bit. With that being said, if this is back, this is up quite a bit. So um, I may try uh, to create a little jig here. You know, let's stand something off there to connect to the frame or uh, to my sliders here. Um, I may just end up getting a just kind of an aftermarket seat if this one doesn't work because obviously there's no adjustments kind of in the in this one all right I'm trying out the seat here the uh, in its natural position this has got maybe uh, two inches and back here has got maybe half an inch so that's kind of naturally it's not flat so beyond it being not uh, flat there, the, the support it gives in your legs, basically like it makes your legs want to go straight out. So meaning if you wanted to be seated like this, you'll have kind of like this natural gap here. So I think if anything, you want it to kind of almost rock back further, then it kind of supports um, your legs being, anyway, kind of more in a bent position rather than a straight out position. So. I will kind of play around a little bit, see what I think is the best seated position, but I think what that'll mean, I think what that'll mean is that uh, here it's gonna have like maybe four or five inches, back here it's gonna have uh, even less, and then the uh, bolt holes and things are gonna be a little bit at an angle. All right, so I'm standing kind of right in front of the uh, steering wheel. The seated position, I don't know if you can tell, but it's just a little to the right there. Um, so essentially, I'll call it that the uh, driver's position, if I'm kind of over here just a little bit. So it's not very much, but it's off from center. So meaning it, you can't just slide it straight forward and straight back as far as the seat goes, the seated position. So. Um, I measured, it's roughly, uh, I don't know, I'll call it a, a, a 10 degree angle in on this side, um, and that side's straight. So um, I'm cutting it, it in half, so meaning I've, I've got these cut, so they're basically, as you adjust the seat, you'll be going in five degrees. So um, as you're going in, you won't be 
getting like increasingly closer to this side um, it should be pretty even and that'll keep the seat even kind of with uh, the frame here and as you get closer to the steering wheel um, everything will kind of be in line so um, I'll figure out how far I want these apart um, for the rails and I'll get them welded up all right I got the uh, one seat the driver's seat flipped upside down um, so I there's metal plates kind of in those two locations well those four locations so uh, drilled and tapped here and here those four places got some uh, quarter inch steel plates uh, that I fabricated and put here these guys will go on here um, the thing is when you have two slides you gotta make sure they're perfectly parallel otherwise when you slide forward or back they'll get bound so I need to get these uh, very parallel and then uh, these ones will mount to those uh, the new metal frame that I put in the car all right a couple things as I'm uh, mounting the seat uh, number one so I've got this um, I tried somebody out five that's five two and they can reach the pedal so five two and then all the way back would be um, six two or something like that so I think I think I've got the adjustment I need the other thing though I'm learning with the steering wheel is it makes it really challenging to get in and out I mean there's not a lot of space so I think um, I may go back to my other steering column adapter and get one of those uh, quick release steering wheels so yeah all right I've got uh, the rails all mounted so again into the plates in the seat uh, there's a quarter inch steel plate and then the rails mount to those so I measured pretty close several times from rail to rail front and back um, so I think they're parallel they pro yeah I really hope they don't bind I don't think they should bind but uh, now I'm gonna weld some steel in the car to uh, get this thing mounted all right so I've been uh, I welded some nuts onto here so I could bolt this to there um, so I've got them on both sides I think I'm ready to weld the piece to the frame um, I'm sure as soon as I do I'll recognize why it's wrong but I think we got it All right, uh, prepping the brackets I made for paint. All right, so we got the seat in, it's mounted. Um, this bar right there, you pull it up and you can slide forward and back. So, huh, I think I think that's got it. Um, the other thing though that I'm noticing is I'm gonna go back to my other steering column adapter because it is really difficult to get into the car um, with the steering wheel. So I'm gonna go with uh, the removable steering wheel. Um, so that short uh, adapter will work well with I need to get a 
Anyway, a, a quick release for the steering wheel. But uh, that's the direction we'll go. All right, uh, working on the passenger seat now. So I'll go ahead and drill holes. The only thing that's different is I'm not gonna have the adjustable rail. I'm just gonna mount this one kind of all the way back in a fixed position. All right, I am making some, I don't know, I guess I'll call them brackets for the passenger seat. So I'm gonna, I'm, I've got these uh, this square tubing here and I'm kind of just welding uh, little plates in the end. So once I get that done, I will show you kind of my thought. All right, so I got these caps on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and like uh, grind it so it's flush. Um, did a okay job welding. Um, oh, you can see that. So anyway, uh, and the thought there is, I'll go get the other pieces and uh, show you. All right, so I got these uh, tops kind of cleaned up. So the thought is, um, we'll put like, these will go here. Um, the, let me back up. So these will be the rails that I weld into the frame. These ones, um, I will figure out where they need to be and then they will get welded to that. This will have a hole that's uh, tapped. This will have um, a hole, essentially two through holes. So one will get uh, bolted in here, the other one will get bolted underneath to the seat. So that's kind of the plan. Um, I'll go ahead and clean up the steel, start doing some test fitting, drill some holes, start welding, all that fun stuff. All right, so uh, set the brackets in, set the seat on top. Did a lot of adjusting, looking and adjusting, looking and adjusting, measuring. So I think this is about where I want things. So the next step, so I marked all the holes. Um, so the next step is I'm going to drill the holes, the mounting holes here, just based on my marks. I'll then uh, fasten them to those rails and put it in again. If everything still matches, lines up, um, then I can go ahead and weld. And I'll probably just start out with some tack welds and then unbolt the seat and then weld the rest. All right, so I welded uh, these rails in place and uh, took the seat off. So these, these still are loose. So I'm going to now take these screws out and the seat out so again these little standoffs will be in place and I'll weld them. All right I've got these tack welded in um, and I unbolted the seat so now clean these off get them painted um, I'll finish welding I'll finish welding over here paint this and then bolt everything down tight.
All right, we, uh, with much effort and tribulation, we got the second seat, the passenger seat mounted. So it's all rigidly secured and bolted on down there with the brackets that are welded. So we've got two seats now that are mounted. There we are from the front. Two seats. All right, looks like the uh, rear tires showed up. So take them inside and see what they look like. So it is probably hard to tell, but that is a big tire. Looks great though. So by comparison, those front tires, rear tires. So here's the other package, this is the wheels. So uh, pretty excited, gonna get them open. Um, it was kind of challenging because um, on the car, so we've got on the front and the back, it's a little bit different. So the front, uh, I, I think I mentioned this before, but it's a five by 100 pattern. And on the rear, it's a five by 120. And the biggest wheels I could fit, I shouldn't say biggest, but tire wise and wheels and everything uh, for the essentially under, under the wheel arch there is about uh, an 18 inch wheel uh, rim. And the back ones, I'm gonna have to go ahead and flare the fenders anyway because the Tesla pushes it out. So I'm gonna have to flare it out. And at that point I could grow it if I needed to. Anyway, all that being said, I gotta open these. And these were, it was a little challenging to find wheels that I could get that would match both, kind of uh, that pattern as well as that pattern and in the sizes and offsets that I wanted. So let's get opening. All right, I wanna take a minute to thank our sponsor. The sponsor is me. All right, here it is. So this is what's going to live at the rear of the car. So it's a 19 by 12. This is a Forge Star wheel. And again, this one's got the uh, five by 120 offset or uh, wheels, wheel hub spacing. And I'm trying to remember, I think it's a plus 59 or something like that uh, offset meaning how far you know the axle goes in and out of the the hub surface so um, and they will be going on what is that 325 by 30 so I know I'll get a lot of comments or questions or people saying this is not the right look or setup or whatever um, the main research I did is I kind of looked at some of the higher performance cars like a like a Porsche um, I think I, I thought the uh, kind of weight distributions kind of more in the back um, again all the torque and things are going to be the back so I wanted to get some pretty big wheels also looked at the uh, again it's going to be a little bit of a staggered offset so I've got 18s up front 19s in the rear and the wheel widths as far as the this is the back this is the front so they're a little different as well so anyway, I picked a uh, setup that I thought would work well that's uh, kind of been proven in other cars. And yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with the look. We'll get them mounted and get them put on the car and we'll get the car off those jack sands. It'll be the first time in like a year. So pretty exciting. So before I mounted the tires, I just wanted to confirm that everything fit. And uh, so yeah, well, I think things look pretty good. Uh, we're, we're pretty close in a couple places. So uh, well, I think we can go ahead and get them mounted. And uh, I guess the first test drive, we'll see if we are rubbing anywhere. All right, I need to go through and um, tighten all the suspension hardware. So I, I haven't tightened anything back here. Um, 
even these nuts here. So I gotta go through and tighten everything. Um, I gotta get the wheels mounted on the rims and then mounted to the car. And then I gotta try and go through my my checklist, my pre-drive checklist. I'm just trying to think of uh, if I might be missing anything. All right, this is a big one, but I uh, got these guys tightened. I um, put on the parking brake and I was able to get it tight. So uh, we'll go ahead and look at the uh, all the other suspension components and get them to torque spec. Okay, I have kind of double checked all the uh, bolts, you know, from the mounting to the suspension, spring shocks, all these places. So checked and double check so everything's tight on this side I'm gonna move on to the other side all right I ran into a little problem um, so on this suspension uh, component here so there's a nut take this one off and a anyways this is weird it's it's got a oval shaped washer with a t-slot so I can get this one out So that guy and that guy. So I am missing that on the other side. So, yeah. I don't know that we're gonna be able to get uh, this thing moving because, all because of that. So it kind of reminds me of that uh, poem, for want of a nail, the shoe was lost, for the want of the shoe, the horse was lost, so on and so forth, and then the kingdom was lost. So, all because of a washer and a nut. I have all the hardware for the suspension um, tightened, all except for kind of the one that uh, we're missing, the, the washer and the nut. So, um, with that missing, um, I don't feel comfortable kind of taking it out for a test drive, but it will give me an extra day or two to kind of make sure that I'm not missing anything else. All right, that's all the time we had for this week. We we're super close to getting that uh, first drive, just missing that one nut and washer, and uh, it'll give us a little time to kind of make sure we're not missing anything else. So, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I do give little teasers on my Instagram account, so uh, go ahead and check that out. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week.